On today's episode, we are looking at Assassin's Creed Origins, the newest game in the long-running series that's existed since 2007, with many that have been loved by both critics and fans, and a number that have received a more mixed response, especially in recent years, but can Origins change that around? That's what Ubisoft are hoping for. The game has been in development for four years, by the team behind Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, one of the titles that's held in high regard. Ubisoft also, HD collection aside, took a year off last year to give this series a little breather from its usual annualised release and give additional polish, no doubt partly due to the lower than expected sales of Syndicate. As with most new Assassin's Creed games, Origins is set in a new time period, setting and follows a new assassin. Set in ancient Egypt in the year 49 BC, you play as Bayek, the last of the Medjai, a group of protectors. Bayek is somewhere in his 30s, slightly older than main characters in Assassin's Creed games usually are, and this is due to the team wanting to tell a slightly different story than a more cliche coming of age one, with this time we're in the hands of a much more experienced assassin from the beginning. So what's new or change with Origins? Firstly, the ground you have to explore looks bigger than ever, with it apparently as large as Black Flag's Caribbean Sea. Returning is the ability to dive, except this time around you'll be able to dive anywhere you like and explore the ocean depths, instead of just the small pockets you were allowed to before. Origins also introduces a lot more RPG elements. RPG elements in Assassin's Creed is hardly treading new ground, however they'll be a lot more prevalent and expanded this time around. Completing certain quests or defeating enemies were in Bayak XP, which will not only make him stronger as he levels up, but grant him ability points you can use to unlock in a skill tree that spits between three overlapping branches, Hunter, Warrior and Seer, allowing you to control what kind of assassin you want to be, whether that be focusing on brute strength or archery for example. Brand new to the game is a loot system, where you'll be able to acquire new weapons from fallen enemies that have a level, power and also rarity assigned to them, taking out higher level enemies will yield better and more rare items. That brings me to the combat that's had an overhaul. No longer are you taking out waves of enemies one after the other with ease, or waiting to simply just counter their attack over and over. But instead, combat now plays out something akin to Dark Souls or The Witcher 3, with light and heavy attacks which will be able to combo together, and also a much greater need to dodge and parry enemies effectively in order to survive. Probably most important about the new system is that it's now hitbox based as opposed to the paired animation system the previous games in the series used, where engagements happened through predetermined animations and scripted AI movements. Using hitbox method has advantages, like being able to target specific body parts, allowing for some additional strategy. Picking your weapons and strategy carefully will be imperative if you want to take on the arenas, increasingly more difficult ways of enemies and also the various boss battles that now exist. When it comes to one of the staples of the series, Eagle Vision, it's never been so literal, as Bayek will see straight through the eyes of a soaring eagle named Senu to mark as unaware prey from a distance, which will give the player a lot better opportunity to scope out the surroundings when attempting to tackle the many camps and forts the game has to offer. Speaking of camps and forts, you'll need to make plenty use of stealth in order to infiltrate them. Despite being a series about assassins, it hasn't always handled stealth all that well, only in the last couple of games having an actual stealth button. Origins, on the other hand, apparently offers players much more in the way of tools and abilities to approach situations undetected and better level design that should make doing so much easier. Lastly, I feel there's been some confusion in relation to this topic, so I feel it's an important one to cover. Loot boxes. Many were worried when loot boxes were discovered in the game, fearing it would function in the same way other recent games like Battlefront 2 and Shadow of War have handled them. However, the devs have responded to this and stated they cannot be bought with real money, only in-game currency similar to how they worked in Horizon Zero Dawn. Hopefully this is indeed the case, though whether the in-game currency can be purchased with real money or if there are any other forms of microtransactions hasn't been fully confirmed yet. Origins releases right around the corner on October 27th for the Xbox One, PS4 and PC, with it looking to be graphically the best in the series yet, with upscale 4K on the PS4 Pro and native 4K on the Xbox One X. Not to mention HDR that should make for an incredible image. It's probably a safe bet if you're a fan of the series and enjoyed all the previous titles, you'll likely enjoy Origins come release, but whether it'll sway those that have become fatigued with the series is yet to be seen, or if some of the fundamental changes made are necessarily for the better. Hopefully they are however, as I'm personally really excited about them. Either way, let me know if you're thinking of picking up Assassin's Creed Origins on the 27th, and if not, why? That's it for today's video, if you enjoyed it leave a like and maybe think about subscribing to see more content just like this. Click the thumbnail on the left for the last episode and the one on the right for another of my videos. Thanks for watching as usual and I'll see you on the next video.